This is a gnosis. Wouldn't be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Poor, busty, misguided Senora. You were dead the whole time. Oh, wait, no. I wasn't talking about the whole thing with Raiden. I mean, yeah, she got killed there, like, wham, boof, boof, vaporized. But, like, here's the funny thing. I'm pretty sure she was already dead prior to this. Like, the entire time we've known her. At least, in a way. But this video is not about Senora. She is merely a catalyst or a gateway into this idea that all of the Harbingers, all of them, are dead. Don't believe me? Well, stick around a while and let's see if I can convince you. But before I try to do that, let me just take the moment to remind you all that this is a theory video. While I do my best to make sure that the lore my theories are based on is as solid as possible and always cited in the description box, mistakes are inevitable. So please use those links I provide in the description box to do your own research and draw your own conclusions and make sure to check the pinned comment at the end of this video to see if there are any corrections or additional notes that I may not have been able to include in this video. And with this disclaimer out of the way, let's jump into the actual meat and potatoes of this video. Yeah, we need to talk about that asterisk. Now when I say dead, I don't mean it in the typical sense of their heart stopped beating because we're in a game where gods and dragons and autonomous magic puppets are a thing, so death kind of needs a new definition. <laughs> for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of Genshin's world building logic, I'm going to base the idea of death in the game entirely on what Hu Tao tells us in her story quest. Specifically, the idea that the dead must return to the ley lines to complete the cycle of life. By that logic, we can assume that in order to die, one must be converted into a form that the ley lines can absorb. That form is memory data, or energy. If something dies but doesn't enter the ley lines, they must wander Teyvat as some sort of ghost, and even inside the ley lines, they can escape and take a ghost-like form. Okay, so that means death in Genshin is basically turning into memory data that the ley lines can absorb. You with me so far? Because this distinction is really important. For example, by normal logic, Hilatrol should be living beings, and they kind of are. However, they're not allowed to enter the ley lines because they are not permitted to die. You could, to a degree, liken them to walking solidified memories, tiptoeing on the border between life and death. This might be the reason why, when we kill them in game, they disintegrate while actual living beings go poof in a cloud of smoke. Compare treasure hoarders, boars, and birds which have the smoke poof when you defeat them to the Hitlerchurls and elemental enemies like Whopper Flowers and Fatui Elites who literally disintegrate when you... Wait, Fatui Elites? Am I really suggesting the Fatui are similar to Hitlerchurls and that they're not truly alive? Well, yeah, I am. One thing Hilichurls and the Fatui have in common is that they both wear masks. Now I know what you're gonna say, the Fatui wear masks cause they're the bad guys and it's for dramatic effect and the Harbingers are based on the Commedia dell'arte where all the characters wore masks and blah 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 yada yada yada. Well listen, listen guys, I know. And that's definitely part of it, but hear me out. There is a much deeper connection here. Consider the case of La Signora. After the Shogun strikes her down, we get her mask as a souvenir, which is clearly labeled as a funerary mask. Now, a funerary mask is a mask that is placed on the face of a deceased person, usually as a way to honor the dead and to help the deceased to pass on to the afterlife. But Senora was wearing this mask before the Shogun killed her, which means it was a funerary mask long before she fell to the Shogun. It's a little weird to wear a funerary mask as a living person, don't you think? Worth noting here that in Chinese, it is actually called a mourning mask, or a mask of mourning, which could either be a reference to Senora mourning her losses, as it somewhat implied in the Pale Flame set, or it could be a reference to mourning portraits, which were casts taken from the deceased in order to make a mask of their likeness after they went away. The latter has stranger implications, like Senora maybe having a whole new body reconstructed for her that was like made to look like her original one, but I'm 
gonna go with the funerary mask meaning here because the implications of fake body reconstructions are completely out of scope for this video. Although, it would explain why the Fatui elites are like 12 feet tall and a... Oh, um, hmm, sorry. Uh, anyway, Senora is wearing a funerary mask, and Hillatrols are neither living nor dead, and they also wear masks, so what's the connection, hmm? Well, one thing I pointed out back in a video back in like 1.6, I think, was that neither Abyss, Mages, nor Hillatrols have any faces beneath their masks. In other words, they lack their former identities. Dainsleft tells us that Hillatrols wear masks because they're afraid to look at their own reflections, which supports the initial theory that I made back then. This is noteworthy because in version 2.6, we got confirmation that both Abyss Mages and Hillatrols are former humans that have been stripped of their former identities, and probably their memories to an extent, which in turn caused their forms to mutate into something a little less than human looking. Well, guess what? Senora is also able to transform into something a little less than human looking. And even more interesting is the description of Senora's funerary mask, which explicitly states that in order to become one of the Fatui, you have to basically give up your identity. So that's yet another thing that Senora and the Hillatrols have in common. Uh, oh, and there's one more thing. They may be denied death, but Hillatrols don't stick around indefinitely. Their uh, half-life spans do reach a natural end, and when that end comes, they simply poof, vanish, leaving nothing behind except for their masks. Now, Senora also vanished completely when Raiden zapped her, leaving only her funerary mask behind. That connection feels significant to me. But you may be wondering, if Hillatrols wear masks because they're afraid to see that they've lost their identities, then why do the Fatui wear masks? They're not afraid to see their identities. I mean, they willingly gave them up, and even then, uh, they do remove their masks from time to time. So remember how I talked about the Fatui being required to give up their former identities and adhere to a new one? Well, if you sacrificed your old identity, then it would become nothing but a memory, or perhaps memory data, which is what is absorbed back into the ley lines in Genshin's version of death. In other words, a Fatui hopeful must kill their previous self in order to be reborn as someone else. That someone else is what is represented by the mask. Just as one would wear a mask for a theatrical performance to become someone else, the Fatui do that too, but on like a normal basis. But that loss of identity and those memories are a bit more important than you'd think. Okay, let's talk artifacts for a minute. I know it sounds like a weird leap to take, but remember, we're talking about the memories of the dead here, and guess what? Artifacts are, according to the Sanctifying Essence, the physical manifestation of ideals and memories from the ley lines, and they only describe dead people, plus the Fatui Harbingers, and Zhongli, but we'll talk about him later. Anyway, of the 40 artifact sets currently in the game, 11 either don't confirm the fate of the one whose story it's telling, or we just don't know who the set is actually talking about, 25 artifact sets then talk about characters we can identify and who we know are deceased, while the remaining 4 artifact sets belong to the Harbingers and Zhongli. Again, just ignore Zhongli for right now. So, statistically speaking, artifacts should be only describing dead things, and this is supported by the fact that the artifacts are memories given shape. Just by definition, a memory needs to be in the past tense, so things that have already happened, not things that are currently happening. In light of this, there is an interesting pattern with the Harbinger sets. The Pale Flame set describes the moment that each of its five mentioned Harbingers agreed to become Harbingers. That would have been the same moment they discarded their former identities. That means that their former identities are now memories that can return to the ley lines, which is, as you remember, a type of death. The memory of that moment crystallized into the Pale Flame set, and this isn't the only instance of an artifact set marking the moment of death or a discarded identity. The Crimson Witch set describes the moment that the Crimson Witch of Flames gave up her identity as Rosalind, and I suspect that the Husk of Opulent Dreams is describing the moment that Scaramouche is casting aside his identity as, well, Scaramouche. 
which is happening off camera. Yeah, that one sounds a little bit biased coming from me, but it makes sense when you remember that his set is basically describing an identity crisis. So here's my obligatory, this has no bearing on his playability status disclaimer because that feels necessary right now. Anyway, the other Harbinger that we know well that doesn't have an artifact set is Child, and he actually still fits the whole lost identity former self thing, it's just not as obvious because back when he was a kid, he fell into the abyss, and when he came back, he was a whole different person. The real Ajax definitely died back then. Oddly enough, this rule of discarded identity also applies to the remaining non-Harbinger artifact holder, Zhongli, or rather, Rex Lapis. I mean, the old man was supposed to remain an Archon indefinitely, but he basically just faked his own death. In essence, he killed off his former identities as Morax and Rex Lapis and kind of like just rebirthed himself as the mortal Zhongli. For fairness, we can compare Zhongli's situation to both A and Venti, who are also Archons, but they have not cast aside their previous identities. A is still a Kage Musha of the puppet that she created with some minor changes in semantics, and Venti still introduces himself as Barbados when it suits him, even though nobody believes him. That makes Zhongli a unique case among the Archons we've met so far. So the takeaway here? Artifacts talk about dead people, and since they talk about the Harbinger's former identities, those identities must be considered dead. And speaking of dead things related to the Fatui… It's time we talked about delusions. Now we have very little confirmed information about delusions, but one thing we do know is that delusions kill their host, most of the time. Mass manufactured delusions like the ones in Inazuma can cause extremely accelerated aging like it did with Tepe. Now my buddy Schwan pointed out that memories are our mental evidence of the passage of time, which is interesting in this context since Tepe had his own time greatly accelerated from the delusion. But this side effect doesn't seem to have any effect at all on the Harbingers, although it does appear to affect the Fatui elites somewhat since they all seem a bit, uh, mentally unstable. What I'm not sure of is whether delusions are literally consuming memories, or if delusions simply warp memories. The consequences of the latter could easily land you with a skewed perception of time, like Tepe, but it could also make your thoughts a little bit jumbled and unstable, like the Fatui elites. Perhaps forsaking your former identity is the only way to protect yourself in case of an emergency. Like, if you warp one identity beyond repair, then you still have another that you could switch to by donning another mask. I'm not confident in this explanation, but it seems like the most likely one I can come up with for now. But there does seem to be other types of delusions that produce different effects. In the Genshin Impact comic, Diluc's father used a delusion without a mask, and the power backfired on him, ultimately killing him in a manner that was quite different from Tepe. Uh, but that delusion seems to be a bit of an exception rather than the rule. It's also strange that his body began to fade away after he died in a manner that's really similar to the way Hillatrils disintegrate in-game, which doesn't make any sense since, as a living being, he should either just lay on the ground motionless like all the other humans or disappear in a poof of smoke. But no, just like the Fatui elites, Diluc's father disintegrates upon death. Regardless, it's worth pointing out that in the same comic, Kaya and Diluc find Kolei's strange power, which was caused by dead god juice that was injected into her, to be incredibly similar to the power that Diluc can wield with his father's delusion. Those similarities are quite noteworthy when you recall the fact that the mass-produced delusions in Inazuma were all crafted from the remains of the eternally resentful dead god, Orobashi. Now, dead gods that are used to create powerful catalysts that kill their users just… that seems like a terrible idea. But it's also a pattern now, a pretty well-established pattern. And just like the Fatui Harbingers who use delusions without any perceived repercussions, Diluc can also use a delusion without any perceived repercussions. He does so in the comic, but note that whenever he does, he is wearing a mask. And he also fits the pattern of a discarded identity because he did cast aside his identity as a Knight of Favonius a couple years prior to the comic where he starts using the delusion again. 
Now listen, this is all really out there and I'm reaching in some places, I know, but I, I just can't shake the feeling that there's a pretty weird pattern here that really merits some more investigation. But what do you guys think? Is this theory absolutely crazy or do you think it's possible? Honestly, I'm not sure myself what side of the fence I sit on, but I find the idea fascinating and I'd love to hear what you guys think too. So let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys all so much for watching and remember the next time you farm for artifacts, you are probably holding a tiny piece of a dead person in your hands. Gotta go see you later, bye!